The following podcast is brought to you exclusively by the Arad Rob Radio Network. Can I tell you guys a story? August 13th, 2005, I left professional wrestling. August 20th, 2021, I'm back. Welcome back to the dork side of the ring. This is episode number five, CM Punk. Still sucks. Joined as always by my co-host here, the one and only from It's Husey. Hello and get my go. Number one fan of K100. Who produces the greatest YouTube page in the history of YouTube pages, K100. Keeping it official. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in a very weak position these days, it's the uh, it's the Kevin Nash's quad of uh, YouTube pages. <laughs> now, why do you why do you say that? Uh, well, the the sadly the the subscription count is leaving. I don't know why, and the the view count, which uh, bothers me because the content I st- I think Keep One Hundred still doing a great show, but for some reason. The, the views will just not pick up and I, I don't get it but but speaking of YouTube yeah this show right the uh, b- biggest YouTube <laughs> uploads ever I actually got a call from the boss of YouTube his na- her name was uh, Bar- Barnett YouTube and she said you guys gotta stop making such good videos there's too many views so they've had to alter it to make it look like a couple of hundred views yeah, unfortunately, we're kind of shadow banned. So yeah, that's uh, it's unfortunate. But you know, initially we started to we did we did pretty well. Uh, you know, for a channel that I hardly ever promote, uh, it mostly just full of video games and just happen to throw random videos in there like this just to see what the fuck happens. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought we did pretty well. Uh, I, I call it the the Saturday morning war. We're going up against Get My Go, and this shit's for real, bro. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> there we'll go. Uh, speaking of Saturdays, tonight in the US of A, uh, the, the moment that no one can wait for, it's AW Full Gear, which as of right now, 
Uh, it's well, it's what is it? Nine a.m. USA time. Yeah. Uh, massively undersold. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. It's not even close either. And it's on in less than twelve hours. And and plus, because uh, I seen Brad Shepard write about that, so because it was because just because I checked the American Ticketmaster, the following dynamite, it's almost completely unsold. <laughs> But they have all and, the but they have all the stars, Susie. Yeah, but this is the thing. It's it's one it's one thing that I get in all the stars. Like like I'm 36, so every, all my references go back to the 90s and before that. If you look at a, a WCW in mid 97, it just seemed like they had everyone of name value. But what made it even better was not just that they had all the names. They brought in the names and had these great storylines. Like, do you remember? When Kurt Hennig or Hennen, whatever his name, Mister Perfect came in, yeah. and there was that whole thing of will he join the 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 Four Horsemen? Is he against them? Is he not? Then that stalled the feud with DDP, and then the feud came. Then the storyline came back. Twist was that he turned to join the NWO, which led to Flair versus Hennig, which was fucking amazing because there's a storyline, and I have to tune in next week to see what happens. Turns out that old Phil Brooks. Did exactly the opposite, and it's apparently him booking himself. This is all his idea, and AW is in a low point. They are at a low point. At first, I want to mention you, you said you're 36. You don't look a day over 35. I'm just saying. Uh, I use lotions from around the world. Um, you know, people are like AW fans on Twitter have to be some of the angriest people in the world, right? Like every time I see. Uh, like Brian Alvarez, we'll we'll, uh, we'll post the ratings and the demo every week, and uh, you just scroll through the fucking through the thread, and you're like, Geez. <laughs> like these are some of, like the lowest IQ people in the entire fucking planet are wrestling fans, right? And I like, look, I'm one of them, but I mean, obviously, you know, and you are too, but you know, we're we're way higher IQ. Yeah, and let's be honest, like uh, I I'll, I haven't watched wrestling since Crown Jewel. And I'll, I'll be honest, in the WWE mark, and I have to admit, I have heard that Raw lately has been really shit. Uh, I didn't even, I didn't see SmackDown, but I heard something that Roman Reigns is the king of the ring now, or, or something like that. So it's it's uh, strange. SmackDown is fantastic, and Roman Reigns is the best in wrestling right now, and has been for the last year and a half. Like, there's no comparison either. I'm uh, I'm beyond the mark for him, but we can. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not so much of a mark that I can't admit when stuff is stupid. Like if he's the king of the ring, that's such a waste of time. Uh, <laughs> he's already the top guy. He doesn't even need the fucking belt at the minute. But but why why think? have the tournament? Play it out. Let let Woods win it. Who's been like wanting to be the king of the ring since he was you know five years old. Uh, to somehow, I didn't, I didn't even know that was a stipulation of the match. I knew they were wrestling each other on SmackDown. I haven't finished the show. I'm, I'm about halfway through. So oh, thanks well, for the spoiler alert. But well, uh, unless, <laughs> uh, unless, unless Vince remembered how to use Google and he found the video of Xavier Woods uh, whacking off in the page's open uh, yearning mouth while another guy stands there doing the same. That's not PJ, brother. And he's black. I wonder if there's the, anything wrong with that. I wonder if the view count has gone up on that on those videos, by the way, since he became King of the Ring. Uh, Do you know what, what's, what's incredible about that stuff? Is like obviously it's horrible what happened to her. That that she trusted someone to keep these things private and then they put them all online. But holy fucking, you couldn't have paid for that. No, you could. <laughs> this thing, she's a gorgeous woman. Yeah. And She's she's just like like literally the opening of the sax tape is her pounding her her anus yeah. with the fucking dildo yeah. so that it makes her her hole bigger. <laughs> it's like what when we were kids we used to freak out at the fact that oh did you see in the WWF magazine there's a photograph with a uh, uh, sable at a table and she crossed a leg and you can see three quarters of her thigh now we can <laughs> now we can see fucking page. It with a fucking face like a custard pie after a cli- uh, climb was done with her. And hey, why would you trust Brad Maddox to begin with, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, he wasn't even the world title holder, man. Yeah. Why would you trust? But by the way, just getting back to the uh, talk about AW Marks, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a, a wrestling show in Belfast called OTT 
wrestling, which had all the biggest names in the world, such as uh, the fucking Killian Dean from NXT and Will Ospreay, who is on the gas. So um, I, I got talking to an old friend who had said who said that his friend, oh, this guy works on the wrestling podcast. And I said, no, that would be keeping him 100 official on YouTube, not the podcast. And he starts going, oh, yeah, I know them. And he goes, and he says, the Disco Inferno is so fucking stupid. Why does he give an opinion on wrestling? He never made it to the top. It's like, it's like yes, he did. He, he wrestled at the biggest time ever. He's a millionaire. Uh, when you can tell stories of like, I remember being backstage once while the NWO angle and Sting and Bret Hart and all this shit. Like he is, uh, he didn't on on paper make it to the top. But in reality, fucking Disco is a massively successful wrestler. Yes, he is, uh, and he will tell you that himself. Yeah, and it's not the first time I was at Oktoberfest and this fucking uh, guy we randomly got speaking to. I mentioned. Uh, the the uh, somehow uh, yeah my buddy Stu is a huge AW mark he mentioned AW I said uh, it's shit because there's no storylines and it's just fake fighting why would I want to watch that I that's why I like watching boxing sometimes well very rarely MMA if if I want to see real stuff I'll watch actual real fights and then the guy got angry at me he goes you're just a fucking hitter man it's like. No, I'm fucking truthful. AEW is fake. I know it's fake, despite what they want you to think. Cunt swankers. Which is why I love it when, uh, you know, people like Sean Ross Sapp will uh, put up stuff on Fightful. Uh, you know, like fourth wall breaking stuff, like stuff behind the scenes. Uh, and then they'll put up a post. Brock Lesnar fined ten million dollars for attacking fucking uh, whatever yeah. his fucking name is, Spears. Uh, look, is it kayfabe or is it not? Like, I, I just, I don't understand shit like that. Uh, Sean we, Ross Sapp is a dickhead, but I, yeah. I can tell you one thing though that really does drive me mad about Twitter. And I woke up to it this morning, and and it's like I like GOC and I like Kevin Castle and, and people like that. Uh, but I'm sick of seeing them tweeting about how they watched AEW and didn't like it. It's like so then don't fucking watch. Stop right. watching it. Like it's stupid. Like. Um, I used to hate watch the uh, all the talk shows because because <laughs> I couldn't believe I shit the way I got to watch this shit. This is terrible. And then it's like, well, why the fuck am I watching this shit? Yeah, no, I, I agree. But um, there's a different line drawn in the sand between WWE and AEW marks. Um, and it seems like anytime they get even a modicum of a win, uh, the AEW fans put up these memes like, here come the fucking e bots, you know. Here come the e trolls, going to talk about talk shit about the demo or whatever. Um, either you like it or you don't. But I mean, why can't you like both, Uzi? Why can't you be a fan of WWE or AEW? Why do you have to be one or the other? Well, I can I can answer that because I, I love the, the storylines in the WWE. Although that being said, uh, since Lesnar's been gone, I haven't been really paying attention. Yeah, no, that's fair. Like like I heard that um, Survivor Series is next Sunday. And the, the the main event is Roman Reigns versus Big A, Big E, and they still haven't uh, had any angles to build it up. None, no interactions at all. Like it, that's fucking insane, and uh, I have no idea what's going. Like it just sounds like shit, but hey, it is what it is. What's wrong with Tony Khan, dude? Begging for people uh, to watch AEW on Twitter. I have the tweet pulled up here. Let me let me read it before I get your thoughts on it. Uh, this was on November 10th. Tony Khan tweeted. Oh, and it's at Tony Khan if you guys want to follow him. It's a fantastic follow. It's one of the best on Twitter. Uh, with hours till hashtag AEW Dynamite goes live tonight on TNT. As a wrestling fan myself, shocker, uh, I have a request for you fellow fans. This is a huge week for at AEW. And tonight's a great night to try to hook a friend into watching AEW with you. Please consider spreading your love of wrestling today. Dude, I'd rather spread fucking herpes and spread the love for eight for uh, AEW, but dude, what yeah, the fuck is wrong with them? Pages, I'd rather spread <laughs> pages, arse cheeks. But <laughs> uh, see when somebody tweets stuff out like that, like a certain podcast that we know there, man. That's or, well, not in fact, not even him. Uh, Chris Martin is what I meant to say. When they tweet out stuff like that, 
of the desperation. Please drop the it's like that's such a bad look. Like that honestly looks like a a guy who knows he's losing. Yeah. And because the thing is, the, the 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 demo talk like. I, the first time I ever heard demos being mentioned was last year when uh, NXT beat Thingy for the first time. I, I grew up, uh, obviously, in the 90s in the WCW, WWE war. I never heard anything about demos back then. It was always the ratings, the ratings, the ratings. And, but now it's all changed. And then Meltzer started talking about something called First Nationals. What the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like, um, uh, well, actually, uh, people with uh, uh, brown eyes count as three viewers uh, uh, in, in the Nelson ratings. So, um, uh, and things. Uh, so, technically, AW beat them in the th in the ratings. And and Tony Khan to this day, because for, uh, for those who don't know, there was a thing where Rampage and SmackDown were on TV at the same time for what thirty minutes or fifteen minutes. Yeah. And for like 11 of those minutes, AEW had the higher demographic than the WWE, not the ratings at all. Only for a temporary part of the show did AEW have the bigger demo. <clears throat> but to Alvarez and Khan, it was all like, we destroyed the WWE, it's finished. And even Meltzer went on his fucking cunt show going, goes, the WWE has to uh, change and they're in big trouble. It's just like, you people are fucking insane. This, the Jim Jones uh, Kool-Aid has uh, gotten spiked with, uh, <laughs> I don't know, cunt pills. I can't think of anything. But Tony Khan went on to say, like, he's happy that CM Punk, all by himself, beat WWE SmackDown decisively, only because <laughs> of the fact that his match with Matt Seidel, who, if you guys don't remember him, I don't either. Uh, now, he was Evan Bourne in the WWE. Uh, their match drew 363,000 in the 18 to 49 demo compared to 277,000 for Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Well, number one, we've seen Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks 45,000 fucking times, right? Uh, and number two, they're girls. Their matches suck anyway. And let, let's be fair, that was not the time that uh, uh, SmackDown was moved to FS1. Yeah, it was. It was a, yeah, a different network with, you know, less, uh, Less access because unless you have you know part of your cable package or satellite package, some people can't even access it. Yeah, and not only that, uh, it, it didn't seem to be heavily advertised that it wasn't on Fox. Plus, just as a follow up to that, WWE did another FS one that did get over a million views. So yeah. once people actually knew what the fuck was going on, uh, but th th this whole thing about uh, like, like with full gear is in a matter of hours. Yeah. And it did, and it what it's in ten hours or something, mm -hmm. and it hasn't sold out. There's your fucking proof that uh, say uh, this CM Punk thing has not been a success. Everything we said in episode one has turned out to be true. We get called haters, but now we actually look intelligent uh, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. I mean, ish. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, what has Punk done? Since we last recorded, he did commentary on a couple of rampages. Uh, he had matches against his first match was against uh, Will Hobbs, powerhouse Hobbs, right? Guy is huge. He's a huge bodybuilder, uh, and he's uh, you know just he's he should be like at the top of the company, right? Uh, just given given his look, he's like a like a shorter Lashley. Uh, but Punk, all 125 pounds of him, beats him. Uh, decisively. Then he takes on Evan Bourne, which we already talked about. And then uh, this guy is a real up-and-comer. Uh, Bobby Fish, who's only been around for about, you know, 25 years. Uh, and, and, you know, he did a decent job in NXT, but uh, yeah, I mean, those are three huge opponents for CM Punk on free TV. But this is the other thing I don't get, is that, like, if, if you look at the way um, the, the big criticism that keeps happening with CM Punk's run is there's no storyline. Like, even if you're the biggest punk mark in the world, why would you tune in to Rampage to see the match if it's yeah. just a match? There's nothing on the line. Like, if Punk loses, does he get fired? Does, does he, if he wins, does he move up the card? I don't know. It's like with that Darby <laughs> Allen thing. It was just a match, and him him winning meant nothing. Darby losing meant nothing. So 
really, there's no reason to go back to rewatch it. And these matches are against people like Hobbs and Seidel and fucking Fish. They they can't afford to lose. No, they can't. Even though it is that's the that's CM Punk, though. I mean, like, I, I do kind of understand that. Like, well, it's Punk. He's the fucking best in the world. He's a multi-time champion, blah, 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 blah. Um, but no, they can't, they can't afford a loss because I mean, where do they go from there? Where do we go now? But that, that is the, the problem. It's like, it really seems like I see us all the time in the K100 questions is that uh, in the K100 YouTube comment section is that AW has two angles. They have the big debut and then they form the gang. Yep. That's it. They have nothing planned to follow up on that. And this CM Punk stuff, the perfect example, and the, it's like, 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 like this whole thing with uh, that's going to my daddy Kingston tonight. They they still haven't explained what it's about, and we'll speak more about that later on. But uh, it's just like CM Punk randomly beating these younger guys who are already on losing streaks is not building up anyone. It's only uh, it's making them the opponents look like jobbers. And it's making CM Punk look stale and overexposed. Well, let's let's put ourselves in, you know, Tony Khan's shoes. The Booker of the Year, Tony yeah. Khan. Um, is he making these matches, or do you think it's Punk saying, hey, you know what, I like what I see from these guys, and obviously he's probably friends with Seidel. And I'm, I'm, look, Matt Seidel's great. I'm not saying he's not. Um, he just He's not a main event player. Um, do you think it's Punk saying he wanted to wrestle these guys? Yeah, from from what I understand, there's people like Punk and uh, I don't know what he's called in AEW, but do you remember Andrade Cien Almas? Yeah, I think he's just called Andrade, maybe. Oh, Andrade. Yeah, I don't uh, know. I don't want. By him. the way, do you ever find that weird <laughs> how in WWE, if somebody has a one name name, it gets trashed, but with AEW, it's okay. Yeah. No, I. I yeah, I couldn't <laughs> understand that either. No, yeah. So I've heard that him and Daniel Bryan. And obviously the EPs get to, EVPs get to uh, uh, book themselves, and that's why like it's a mess. Like they're all marks for themselves. They all keep going over. It's and but the the thing about it is that like if you compare this to the WWE, the their two big part timers from like veterans is Edge and Brock Lesnar. The Edge has been gone since October. I think, well, it's like the same with uh, Lesnar. They both left after Crown Jewel. Yeah. But when you do see them, it's a huge deal. Okay. And it's always to set up the next big uh, feud that's going to last months or it's some type of huge angle that gets people freaking the fuck out. And even all these years later, because uh, we don't get to see them so much, it becomes a huge deal. It's like with Edge is wrestling on fucking free TV. I'm watching it. Brock Lesnar's on the Crown Jewel. He hasn't been there in over a year. I'm watching fucking Crown Jewel. With CM Punk, he's working random mid-card matches on the B Show. You know, he first came out on, on Rampage, and he had, you know, the big homecoming and then speech. And then next week on Dynamite, he's going to have another speech. He'll, he'll continue his thoughts. Uh, and then he did commentary on Rampage after that. Uh, yeah. and, and then he, I think he did commentary on Dynamite after that or whatever. And then, and then he wrestles these, these nobody. Well, I wouldn't say nobodies, but these mid card guys that you said. Okay. But that, that, that reminds me a lot of, uh, the NWO back in the, around 98 time. And even later 97, where it used to be from like 96 to 97, that every time the NWO is on TV, Something huge happened. There was a big angle. Yeah. There was a new member where, where something was like, I can't turn this off because you don't know what's going to happen. But then around later 97 into 98, they would just turn up, do a 12 minute promo. That's it. And it be, and then it just started happening again and again and again. And this is what's happened to CM Punk. They've overexposed it and they've taken away anything that could have made it special. And uh, I'm, I'm, Kind of glad that it ha- you know, like we, we've been proven right that this cunt is not uh, a top guy, and I love that it annoys people when we say it. I do too, and you're right about the uh, the fact that he should be an attraction, like Edge and like Brock Lesnar, even Roman to an extent. You don't need Roman out there and SmackDown every single week. 
Uh, yeah, but it's, it's also. Uh, did you ever watch? Uh, were you a TNA watcher? Occasionally. I, I remember when Kurt Angle debuted. It was it was huge. Nobody yeah. said it was like forty eight hours after leaving WWE or something. Like yeah. it was shocking. And then the first month, I remember there was all these really intense promos and stuff with Samoa Joe, and you're thinking, the and you sort of th- and you get and apparently the ratings were going up, and and it's like. I like this. This could be like a genuine uh, alternative and competition. Then after that match, Kurt Angle started wrestling on weekly TV. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was fun. And it's like he looks sore. He looks injured. Uh, it's the same match all the time. This is too much. It's boring. I'm going back to uh, buying drugs. <laughs> um, if Punk were to get into a storyline, do you think it would make a difference? Uh, yeah, because because but that's, that's the thing. It's like if if like I've oh, well I'm not mm. like like yeah, well, we'll let's just, let's just say like he throws himself into the world title mix at some point, right? And he shows up once a week to do a promo or does some vignettes or whatever, some backstage stuff. Like, would that be enough to get people like locked in? Like, oh, maybe Punk's gonna win the world title. Like, would that even make them get over a million viewers? Because still. They haven't got back over a million since we've recorded this. Last recorded yeah, the first I th- one. I think that it's um I, I think that it would only draw in people who are already watching. Yeah. I think that with, with CM Punk, the opportunity to draw new fans in has been blown. And the same with Daniel Bryan, I'm gonna say it's like uh he's the, the, them giving away Omega versus uh Danielson on free TV was a good idea because they were they were struggling they needed to do something massive so they did this and right on cue they dumped the storyline immediately after and went back to omega versus page yeah and it's like it's like no this was your chance to really like they they could have had the bellas on the tv because they're (laughs) they're off the wwf now yep out of the the wwe so it's like it was just they could have done so much more and again, do you think Danielson's in a position like Jericho? He's just there to put the young guys over, like Sting and, and Punk and all the older guys? I think so, but I think that this is also uh sort of shoot well somebody sent in an email about this to K one hundred and they called it being exposed and this is like Danielson and saying Punk and that uh, Danielson it's not like he was buried in WWE. He headlined WrestleMania. Yep. Earlier this year, uh, those SmackDown ratings were lower than what they're getting now. So why would that guy who couldn't bring in good ratings for WWE at WrestleMania fucking season do do better for AEW? And it's proven not to be. And if you want to talk about business wise, you, you hear all these talks about how they're getting like between three to five million each a year for three or four years. This investment has not paid off at all and i've heard a lot of shit about how the w the aw video game is almost going into triple figures of the millions spent on it like it's it's fucking ridiculous they haven't made a single dollar yet since they've been in existence not one dollar that's, that, that's actually uh true billy body said on his uh on k100 that aw in the two years that they've been running not only have they overrun their budget They've actually lost over twenty million a year for the two years running, and it seems like it's coming again. Well, didn't WCW do that too until Eric Bischoff took over? So I don't know, maybe, maybe they need yeah. Uncle Eric to come through. They, they could, but what's he really going to do? Because <laughs> Bischoff was in fucking TNA, and that didn't change up much. And the thing is, the thing with Bischoff, I love him, and I'm a huge fan of him, and I've interviewed him and stuff, and I'm a mark for uh, for most of his stories. He he remembers his uh, career very very differently to the way most other people seen it happen. Like WCW went under because of Bischoff's uh, ideas. Uh, going head to head is a stupid idea because that means somebody loses, and then if someone, when someone loses, they look bad, and then the kind and then it's hard to recover. And that's really what happened with. Uh, the, the 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 Monday Night War stuff. So Bischoff, yeah, yeah, Bischoff, you need to learn a thing or two from expert Hughes. 
That's exactly right. But hey, it was our favorite time in wrestling, right? But oh, you, the best. But you're right. Somebody did have to lose, and you can't sustain that kind of a show every fucking week. You just can't. Uh, no. Sure, they did for you know 83 weeks or whatever, uh, but eventually they couldn't keep up with the with the machine. Yeah, but it, it's like uh, we we a fan of Game of Thrones or Walking Dead. No, not at all. Well, I remember uh, they used to get uh, all the the press, the publicity when they would, when someone would get shockingly killed. And for those that haven't seen it, like it's not like it would be building up to it. Just right out of the blue, here's Billy the Hero and fucking dead. You go what? <laughs> like in in Game of Thrones, the the main character was killed off before in the middle of season one, and it, it's like what the fuck? It just happened there. But then it became born because they kept trying to shock you, and they would run, and they would started killing people off so often. <laughs> did you did you seen it coming? Right. And this is what's going to happen with AEW. Like I heard today that the Tony Khan signed between nine to eleven people from Ring of Honor. Oh fuck! Yeah. Where, plus, where are they going to go? What are they going to fucking do? Exactly. Plus, uh, there's uh, all, all the dollars WWE releases. Uh, Bray Wyatt allegedly is coming in. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are coming into AEW soon uh, next year. Kyle O'Reilly, superstar that he yeah, is. Johnny Gargano is being uh, spoken about. All the, the, there's like what? So there's technically twenty more names coming in. And knowing Tony Khan, who just wants to be friends, and be like, "Hey, I'm your great friend. You're not worth the money. I'm going to give you two point five million a year, brother." It's like, shouldn't they be uh, worthy of the money before that kind of offer? I just want people to be my friend. Maybe it'll be on Dark or Elevation or one of the other 15 shows that they have. Because, you know, the, the, the first one was doing so great, they had to make all these other ones. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a prediction that Rampage could get cancelled, you know? It could. It, and it, it I could. think it would It should, help. actually. Yeah, it probably would help AEW to downsize like they've still got the money they're never going to go broke because of tony khan but uh, they don't need two tv shows and they could lose maybe 20 to 15 uh wrestlers and it wouldn't affect their show in the slightest so this is why people give wwe shit but they're doing the right thing i know this isn't part of the topic but of the 72 wrestlers that were released this year so far for wwe how many of them are main event draws yeah, I like guess that's, that's the thing. Like, I'm a huge uh, Karen Cross, Mark, your Killer Cross. I thought he was going to be the, the biggest fucking thing for WWE, but the fact is, they weren't using him. And apparently, there, there's all this talk of like backstage classes, uh, clashes, and arg uh, arguments and stuff. So, as much as it sucks, and I do think he'll end up getting signed by AEW and he'll fucking do amazingly. But at the same time, it's like, this isn't going to fuck with WWE at all. Like, if you look at the, what do you call the two Australian girls? Oh, the Iconics? Or right. What used to be the Iconics, they are, yeah. They are fucking gorgeous women. Like, it's freakishly good looking. I love that accent. But uh, when they got cut and everyone was like, how could you do this? How could you do that? It's like... <laughs> Well, because they're not top stars, yeah. and if like if if, if we if they turn around and says, "Oh, Vince McMahon has just released Roman Reigns," I'd be like, "What the fuck are you thinking?" Yeah, exactly. But they've kept the people that they know are draws, like Roman, like Brock, like Edge. Uh, say what you want about Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn. I mean, you, look, you do need the mid card talent too. You can't just have like a whole main event show. So I do understand why they maybe shouldn't have gotten rid of some of the people they have this year. But, I mean, look at what Braun Strowman did. He's going on Twitter and fucking Daisy Dukes and shit. He's taking a bath in the street with fucking Mojo Raleigh. Like, this guy was a fucking detriment to himself. Uh, yeah, the yeah. The, the word I heard about him is that he'd had a lot of hate backstage last year. When, do you remember when the, lock, when, in the, the lockdown first happened? Yeah. Uh, everybody... St apart from like pro wrestlers and stuff had lost their income uh and, and like the indie scene was dead wrestlers went from me went from making literally zero for like 10 months but Strowman went on twitter and was trashing everybody <laughs> saying oh stop begging you never made it big anyway then the other rumor is that he failed three steroid tests that never went public and then again after wrestlemania 
he failed another test for a band, so and then it says right gone. And the fact that he's had this bad reputation and hasn't been signed up by fucking Impact or AW or even MLW, it, it, it's a sign that that some of these people. I remember Disco Inferno said before, you get fired for a reason. You don't get fired because you're you're perfect, and it sucks and it's not fair. But that's the facts. I mean, you look at a guy like him who had, I mean, like Vince McMahon, you know, probably jerked off to him every night when he first saw him. Uh, he, he's, he's the perfect guy for a Vince McMahon. It's a big guy territory. WWE has always been a big man territory. There has to be a reason why he's getting pulled out of the main event at Royal Rumble and getting replaced by fucking Finn Balor. You know what I mean? And after he was advertised, like there has to be a reason why he would start and stop and start and stop. Because he, yeah. he had that fantastic storyline with Roman Reigns uh, that went like five to six months uh, and when he started to flip over the ambulances and all that shit. Like, he was a big deal. But you have to wonder, why did his career kind of fucking flounder? Why did he get put with uh, with Bray Wyatt and doing that weird fucking, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what the fuck was the cinematic matches? <clears throat> oh, yeah. It was shit, but I mean, there there has to be a reason why he wasn't the fucking guy. It's because he did it to himself. Yeah, and then there's there's also these rumors that, uh, so I should say rumors. I read this in a one of the YouTube comment section on K100, keeping them 100 official on YouTube, was that Alistair Black, Cross, Strowman, and uh, Bray Wyatt are going to form a faction in AEW and. <laughs> Now on paper, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah. But then in real but then in well in reality, but then if you look at AEW, they have too many factions already. So that'll be what the, the 14th faction at the same time. <laughs> right. It, it's a and then and then but what what else happens with the factions just bringing it back? They feud with like a CM Punk or a Daniel Bryan or a Cody Rhodes, and they all fucking lose. Yeah. Exactly. Look, Tony Khan is an attitude era guy. He loves that shit. Remember how many factions they had in 97? They had fucking Jesus. DX. They had the DOA. They had the... Uh, Truth the, Commission. Truth Commission. The Oddities. Nation. Uh, Nation. They had um, a Spanish Lost, one, too. Lost Periquas. Lost Periquas. Yeah. Lost Conans. Right. <laughs> this is what Tony Khan's doing all over again. It's like rinse and repeat. He's just doing the stuff that he liked when he was growing up, but now he's got the fucking keys to the castle, and he's, he could just do whatever he wants. Yeah, Tony Khan played a general manager mode on SmackDown versus Raw 2016, yeah. and now he's living it. That's, right. <laughs> that's exactly right. He does have a video game roster, and <laughs> that's fucking fantastic. Look, he bought he bought the rights to Owen Hart, you know, so he could put him in the video game. Yeah, but the thing the, that's the thing, it's good and all that like everybody loved Owen Hart growing up. What the fuck's Tony Khan gonna do? Like what video packages he doesn't own content. It's five matches from New Japan that he had that he had probably. Yeah, and it's 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 just it's getting exhausted. And really, most fans are bored of that story. Yeah, he, he, Brad Hart's have been out there calling out on Hart's wife. I mean, I have for years. I even read her book too. I mean, she's it, look if if it was my wife doing that. I mean, yeah, I could probably understand that. But goddamn, pal. Um, the dude has a legacy. Oh, way, he needs to be. He needs to. He needs to be featured. Like he should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, he never will be unless she dies, and you know maybe his kids fucking put him in there. But yeah. But the one thing I'm gonna say. Do you know what his son is called? Mm, Oge. Oge. Yeah. Who the fuck has a baby? Like these adorable wee small bald idiots, and you go, oh look at this thing. Let's call it Oge. Maybe they want to call him OJ and just didn't pronounce it right. Oh, uh, innocent man. Speaking of ratings and ticket sales. <laughs> great <laughs> great segue. Yeah. I bought a segue the other day. Speaking of segues, uh, ratings and ticket sales. Uh, so as we mentioned, Full Gear is in ours, and it is massively undersold. The, di- the following Dynamite, it's like they've sold no tickets. I checked the Ticketmaster. Uh, plus, TV ratings are down well below a million again. Uh, I blame this on CM Punk because there was so much hype going into his debut and they fucked it up and it's all him booking himself. Yet Tony Khan's tweeting that, that CM Punk's this, the biggest name in pro wrestling. It's, it's like, but he's not. 
he, he's not like we can fucking prove it that he's not. So why is it even being mentioned? The guy CM Punk was a huge name only in wrestling <clears throat> in 2011 and 2012. That's it. <clears throat> he was after bit, that he I mean, he brought draws to UFC maybe for the first couple of fights. He he did for the wrong reasons because uh like, like the, the, he had as much UFC experience as us. That's true. <laughs> and and that's but that's one of the, him joining UFC uh put a level of smugness in Sam Punk that he's never been able to sh- shake. He just seemed to genuinely think he was a tough guy. And it's like, but based on what? Anybody can go to the gym and fucking uh you know, and train boxing, train MMA. I've been running for exercise for well over a decade now. Does that mean I'm going to take on Usain Bolt? No. <laughs> uh, and and the fact that these ticket sales are so bad, the ratings are dropping. Uh, when you've got those kind of names like Jericho and the Matt Hardy and the fucking Daniel Bryan, Sam Punk, all that, and even and that's the other thing. Adam Cole, uh, baby. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and that's the thing. AW goes all out, pardon the pun, for every show. All the names are there for every episode. And all combined, they're drawing nothing. Well, nothing. not nothing, but they're not selling stuff out. They're not bringing in over a million. And let's be honest, even WWE's ratings of like Raw's one and a half million, SmackDown's two, that's nothing to be like running through the streets. Like I heard, what, what's there a show called? Featherstone or Yellowstone? Yellowstone, yeah. Right? 14 million people watch that. Yeah. So they can't go, oh, but the way it's changed and on demand. and Entertainment's and entertainment. Like- it doesn't matter what form of it. Wrestling is entertainment. So if you put on a good show, people are going to watch. But it's not a good show because clearly people are watching other forms of entertainment. Yeah, and that is because AEW doesn't have storylines. It's literally like if, if you've seen two grown men fake fighting in the street, you would think, what a bunch of dickheads. So why would somebody tune in to watch it on your, uh, on TNT? But there's 15 years of hostility between Eddie Kingston and CM Punk. It's so The tension between the two is so great that you can't miss their match at full gear. I hate Eddie Kingston. He's a fucking okay. douchebag, right? He's been an indie guy for, what, 20-something years? I think he started... I forgot what I told you, like 2000, was it 2001? I don't know if he went back that far, but he's been in the game a long fucking time. And there, he had a tryout in WWE, and obviously they didn't sign him. There has to be a reason why this guy has been on the end. Like, yeah, he did Impact and Ring of Honor, but, like, fucking, who cares, right? Like, anybody can do that. You and I could probably go yeah. to Impact next week. Uh, but there has to be a reason why he's he's not been a star, and he's fucking 39 years old. Yeah, see, the thing about, I remember there was this storyline in Impact, where it was LAX, who, who, led by my good friend Conan. The good LAX, not the Max one they got. Moon. No, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they did that stuff against uh, Eddie Kingston's group, whatever they were called. And it was these really amazing, intense promos. And then the matches were always great. And you think, this is fucking amazing stuff. But in AEW, somebody's telling him, right, Eddie, you're, you're this street gangster gimmick so go out there and cry <laughs> because you're a street gangster and lose every big match do that uh, that thing with john moxie where you ran out to fucking protect him from the bombs which was oh god like i wanted to fucking <laughs> yeah someone who grew up around the, the early from the later era of the ira i thought those bombs were pathetically insulting to me yeah that's true yeah uh, I hear, and plus, uh, when Eddie Kingston is criticized on a on Keeping It One Hundred official on YouTube, he fucking p- cries about it on Twitter too. Yeah, and he and he posts the link site, and he's like, "Oh, they're just hating me, bro." It's like, no, we're we're fucking by the only thing good about Eddie Kingston, he has he has wonderful eyebrows. Yeah, he does absolutely. I mean, he does cut a good promo, but then the bell rings. I don't think he's a fantastic wrestler. He's not lighting the world on fire in a fucking five-star melter jerk-off match. But, I mean, uh, I didn't know there was history between Punk and, and Kingston until I watched a little video yeah. they put out. So, 
<laughs> but but that's the thing is is that uh, what makes me wonder is if there is a storyline here, what is it that that they have hate from the past? Yeah. Great. Woo! <laughs> nice one, Tony Khan. Yeah, from here. like twelve years ago, they got some heat together. <laughs> like, I don't fucking know. Yeah, and then the other thing that makes you wonder is that what's going to be the after effect? Is are they just going to dump the story? Like this is the match. Uh, CM Punk moves on to the next one. I guess I, I don't know if it's going to be a one off, but like, what else can you do with it? The I, I to me, uh, CM Punk should have come in right against Kenny Omega. And you could have done some sort of screw job finish, a time limit draw to set up rematches down the line. Yep. Uh, everybody always talks about they should do Punk versus MJF, but uh, the whole MJF's whole thing is that he cuts the I get what's the term the reality heel promo yeah. where he brings up real life stuff. There's no way CM Punk's going to let the, the UFC no. thing be brought up, no, and, no and neither should Tony Khan. Right. Right. Uh, it look, if you're going to treat CM Punk like he's a fucking mid carder facing all these mid card guys, the reality for those that may be tuning in that might not know exactly who he is, they're going to think he's a fucking mid card guy. So, again, yeah. the only people that you're appealing to are the people that are already fucking there. You're not hooking anybody else in because you're not putting him in a fucking main event spotlight. So, you're not going to get any new fans in because they're like, who the fuck is this skinny 40 year old fucking dude with no muscles? Yeah, I, I think that if, if even if they started that tonight and we're like, oh, the CM Punk storyline against uh, Omega or Cody Rhodes or whatever, I think that it, it's been too long yeah. and people already don't give a shit. It's been a couple months. They've already missed the opportunity. Yeah, I, I think they've blown it. It's like, um, I remember, I know I always do kiss analogies here. In the 92 or 91, Kiss put out this album called uh, Revenge. And it's fucking great. But then they waited nearly a year and a half to go on tour. <laughs> yeah. And by the time they'd announced the, the tour, the whole buzz of the Revenge album was gone. So they had to play to much smaller venues. And it's like you had your window and you blew it. Yeah. So what and do we do? With, what's happened. So what do we do with Punk from here? Like, how can you, how can you save his reputation uh, and try to get people to tune in. I mean, it, look, again, since we recorded the first episode of this uh, several months ago, they haven't gone back over a million viewers. Rampage gets less ratings than fucking NXT, the developmental brand, NXT 2.0. So what do you do to turn it around and make people tune in? What's the future for Punk? Does he just keep wrestling mid-carders? Do you make him a main event guy? What do you do? Yeah. Uh, one of the, th I think they should send them home, frankly, <laughs> yeah, and let people miss him. But then when he comes back, he's like a hill and have him. And because the problem is, uh, in reality, they've given Phil Brooks everything he demanded yep. in his contract. He's getting paid a shitload of money, which, to, and to be fair, that's on Tony Khan. Uh, he didn't have to pay if. CM Punk was smart to get the best deal he could, so fair enough. Uh, but it, it, one of the things that made him cool and popular but in WWE was that he really was different to the other wrestlers, and he didn't look like a fucking John Cena, and he didn't look like Batista or Bobby Lashley. He, he was different. Uh, in AEW, CM Punk is just one of them. He's another one. Yep. And they all look the same. They all talk the same, dress the same, same promos. He's nothing to rebel against because everything he rebelled against is now the, the norm. And he's such an AW mark that the CM stands for company man. <laughs> nice. Thank you. It, it's, I think that his, his character's dead. That, that whole, I'm the rebellious MMA guy thing. I, I and I know it's, it's a bit late in life, but for for him, I think it would maybe time to update it or try something new. He could just be the douchebag that he is, right? Just come out and just be himself because he look punk. Phil Brooks is not the happy, smiley guy that you see on fucking AEW every week. He's a weird dude, and I've I've said uh, this before and gotten heat from friends of ours, but uh, he needs to come out there and just be himself. 
and just crank it up. That's what will get people fucking tuned back in because it, Darby Allen is the young rebel now. Like it's not punk anymore. He's just the old fucking let him be the old bitter guy. That's what he is. Let him fucking go off about what happened to him in WWE. And, you know, he could touch on USC, but you know, he, he could, he could do a great job of just saying, look, I came here for the fucking money. I don't, I don't remember what I said when I first came out here. Like, I'm back for the fans or I'm back in wrestling. Fuck it. No, I'm back here for the paycheck and let him yeah, be a th- fucking douche. Like, I don't give a fuck about any of you in the seats. Uh, I sp- look how much money I spent giving you dumbasses fucking free ice cream bars. Uh, and you guys still didn't fucking like me. That's all he has to do is turn heel and just crank the volume up on the fact that he's a fucking douchebag. But th- th- that is the, the, but the thing is, would he have the balls to do that? Because like, I don't see anything worth complaining about for him. What else has he got to lose though? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I just think if he comes out with his better than you attitude, kind of like MJF, uh, I think that would get people to hate him. And then whoever fights him, you know, make that a big deal. Make in, like you said, bring him back every couple of months, make it a big, like, I don't have to be here every week for you guys. I'm getting paid this amount of money. I'm getting paid more than Jericho, blah, blah, blah. Tony Khan's open up the fucking checkbook for me. I don't have to be here to wrestle for you assholes every single week. And then don't just don't show up. And when he does come back every couple of months, then, you know, make it a big deal. Yeah. They should even have him just no show. <laughs> yeah. I could do that too. Yeah. Like, I, 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 like having be a heel and be like, oh, next month it's going to be CM Punk versus, fuck, I don't know. I can't think of one wrestler. Right. <laughs> yeah. Page, CM Punk versus Adam Page. And he just doesn't turn up. And then cut to the main screen and have him, like, call in <laughs> with poor audio, too, on his phone. <laughs> just be like, oh, hey, guys, yeah, decided to go to Jamaica for the weekend. Tony Khan bought me a fucking private jet. It's in the contract. Uh, I don't want to come to Boston or whatever the fuck. But here's the other question: Is it would he actually do that? Because I've always heard that he was a real mark for himself and didn't like to be booed. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that true. I have heard that as well. But if you take that thing that you just said and kind of break the fourth wall down, like you like to do with the pipe bomb shit. Cut backstage to Tony Khan, who's legit fucking pissed off, like that he didn't show up. Like, I'm going to fucking mm. sue his ass. He's in breach of contract. We advertise him and make it seem That's real. Like- but he's, yeah, he sucks. I mean, he probably couldn't do it. He's a horrible <laughs> actor. But you know what I mean? Like, make, put a little bit of realism into it. That's shit that we want to see, right? Yeah, but then, because that's the thing. There's so many AEW fans think what they're watching is a legitimate shoot. <laughs> so... Uh, it, it, you might as well take the risk. Like they've got to do something. What they've done right now, uh, it's the total babyface push, and it hasn't worked. No. So change it, reboot it, and start again. Because all this stuff about WrestleMania and the talk that Lesnar's going to be at it and The Rock's going to be at it, uh, I'm sure Cena's going to be there, Edge, uh, apparently Ronda Rousey's coming back. Uh, there's, there's all this stuff that that's despite what Meltzer and all wants to say, people prefer WWE. Like, Raw is known to be shit, yet more people tune in to watch it than yep. watch AEW, which is endlessly praised. And no matter what, WrestleMania is the draw. Doesn't, yeah. matter, doesn't matter who's on it. People are going to watch WrestleMania because it's the biggest fucking event there is, and they've made it feel that way. Even if the weekly program sucks and we don't watch it, we're still going to tune in to WrestleMania next year because it's, it's fucking WrestleMania. We're not going to tune in to fucking All In or All Out or... Fucking full gear, all gear, no gear. Nobody fucking cares. No one's paying $50 <laughs> to watch a fucking, you know, an indie promo. Yeah, and the, the other thing, it's like with WWE, they've got all these stadium shows lined up for next year. The Royal Rumble, they've got more crown jewels. Apparently, there's international stadium shows. Uh, the the Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank's going to be a stadium. Just, yeah, that's weird. I didn't understand that one. Yeah, but that that being said, Money in the Bank is one of those events that I, I never miss because they're either going to see a crazy stunts or someone get badly hurt forever. Either way, I'm going to be whacking off to it like Xavier Woods into Paige's mouth. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is, uh, in the couple of months that we've started this show, between the first episode and now, nothing has changed. In fact, it probably yeah. even got worse. Ratings have gotten worse since CM Punk came back. 
And you can't necessarily all blame it on him, but I mean, you you kind of can because he was booked as being the guy that's n- never coming back to wrestling, never ever, like we heard in the beginning, uh, and, and he did. And to what to six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand people. Yeah, he he came back at a time when it's just not popular. That's like fucking. But wait, wait, no, it's, it's the like, best time to be a wrestling fan, Easy. That's what we keep hearing, right? But it's like look at the Limp Biscuit. Remember them? They just came back with their first album in about twelve years. I didn't even know. And that. to <laughs> zero reaction, I, I didn't even nobody know. cares. Yeah. There's there's no new metal scene anymore. I actually, so never even they, heard of that. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. Yeah, it's called. Uh, it's called. Do you know what it's called? Still sucks. <laughs> You're ripping me, right? <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. The, the new Lincoln, the new Limp Bizkit album is called Still Sucks. Holy shit, what a way to wrap it up. <sighs> on that note, Husey, where can we find you on social media? And what do you got going I on? I can't believe that. I, 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 yeah, that's... that. Uh, le- le- yeah, actually, you know what? Just uh, It's audio podcast, but I mean, people can... Who gives a fuck? I'm going to look it up. Limp Biscuit. Oh, hold on. John Wangland's name came up. Hang on. Because you typed in limp? <laughs> A new album. Yep, Still Sucks is the sixth <laughs> studio album by American rap rock band Limp Biscuit. You can't make that shit up. That's fantastic. That's unbelievable. Good job, Easy. That's fucking fantastic. Where can we find you on social media, brother? What do you got going on? Uh- at the Hughie on Twitter, at the Hughie on Instagram, preferably follow me on Instagram. Uh, if you're a fan of professional wrestling and want to hear experts talking about it, not just a couple of marks like us, go to Keep No One Hundred Official on YouTube. That's the official YouTube channel for uh, Conan and Disco Inferno's controversial podcast, plus Billy Body content that everybody loves. And my YouTube channel is called. Husey Entertainment, which has got, at the time of recording this, a I recorded a podcast with Mike Durband, Ooh. and it was a fucking disaster because uh, I'd had a couple of drinks beforehand, I'll be honest, and then during the recording, I kept, I had another two or three pints, and I start off kind of buzzed and happy. By the end of the episode, I'm just flat out drunk. Also coming up soon, if you check Husey Entertainment, my Vince Russo Christmas special, where I interviewed the great man, got some great 90s stories and some uh, Christmas music debate that only I love to have and I'm interested in. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Rad Rob Gaming. You can check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Rad Rob Gaming. I am a video game streamer playing mostly Super Mario Brothers content. I stream every Tuesday night and Saturday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Uh, and I also have a YouTube channel called Rad Rob Gaming. If you want to check out my other podcast, RTW Main Event, which Husey's a big fan of because Dr. Ocho is on there, that drops every Thursday. Uh, RTW Rewind drops whenever I feel like putting out a show, uh, but that's typically on Sundays on Hameen Media Group. Uh, I have Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr., which is our bowling show that Ocho and I do with the one and only JP Jr. That drops on Fridays. Uncanceled with Drake Wirtz, former WWE NXT referee Drake Wirtz. Uh, that's our political show that drops on Fridays as well. Uh, what the fuck else do I do? God damn, you think I do enough shows? I think we need some more. Brad Shepard on Lace. Did you oh, say that one? Oh, great. He's going to give me. Yeah, he's going to fucking. He's going to get me for that one. Brad Shepard on Lace, which is taking the world by storm and really literally pissing off every single mark on the internet. Uh, that drops on Thursdays uh, on the Hameen Media Group uh, or anywhere podcasts are found. Brad Shepard is a Twitter heat magnet. Uh, and. It just gets worse every single week. Uh, it is also episode one. I, I will say this: the second highest downloaded show in the history of HMG. Uh, and that's a fact, brother. Yeah, and the th- one of the things I got to say about Brad is like, is his opinions on wrestling. Obviously, it's his opinions, but that that story about his, uh, I did not know he was in the police. Yep. Yep. And that story was fucking amazing. So, like, uh, it is worth to listen. And the poli- he was a police officer. He was uh, he served uh, the, our our country, Husey, our country. Uh, you're American. Don't don't. You've been fucking around with this weird shitty accent for quite a while. You're not really Irish. You're you're from fucking San Diego. Connecticut. <laughs> Close enough. Um, in any event, uh, we appreciate you guys' support. We'll see you whenever we decide to put another one out here. 
uh, for Dork Side of the Ring. Until then, guys, fuck off. Fuck these bitch ass marks. Fuck these bitch ass marks. Fuck these bitch ass marks.